Welcome to another episode in lockdown, aka no outdoor scenes. I can go to work, I can go to, I guess, the shops, I can go buy medicine, I'm allowed to, you know, exercise outside, but I'm not allowed to take photos because then that just gives away that I'm not going for an exercise or, you know, to work or any of that. But that haven't been said. I have been into my storage, I've spent some time looking through some of the cameras that I've put away. I actually bought a massive hoard of cameras many, many years ago when this channel was just taking off and I was supposed to explore each camera one by one and I've only managed to get through about 20% about of the cameras. So in my storage, I've got loads of cameras. A significant amount of them are probably broken and I'm just gonna, you know, chuck into the, into the bin really. But um, there are some that I'm finding that are working. I picked three random ones from my stash yesterday and I was just sort of dusting them off and cleaning them off and having a look and getting my first impressions about them. And in this video, I'm gonna present three of them. And two of them, I know what they are. And one of them is a mystery camera that I haven't even actually figured out what it is yet. Some of you guys watching will probably be able to tell by just looking at it, but the bit in front is falling off Anyway, I'll talk about that later. The very first one is this. It's the Canonet 28. It's not the rangefinder iconic one. This is the older one with the uh, flash cube shoe, point and shoot camera. So the iconic Canon 28 is similar to something like a an Olympus 35 RC. This one is similar to something like an Olympus Trip 35. So it's got a 40 millimeter focal length, fixed lens, uh, maximum aperture of 2.8, and it's got zone focusing that is viewable through the viewfinder. Very, very basic. It's a little bit heavier than it, its appearance suggests. It's built of some really cheap stuff. This is just plastic that is made to look like chrome. Um, but there's some metallic parts of it that makes it a little bit heftier than um, one would think. I sort of like it. I like the, you know, rangefinder-esque feel of it, but it's not a rangefinder. It's just a viewfinder camera. Um, it's, you know, straight through. Um, not what you see is what you get or any of that. You don't get a rangefinder focusing. It's just um, a zone focusing, you know, hope for the best type. The thing I like the most about this camera though is that the auto exposure engine in there uses a very available battery type which is the triple a batteries that you can get anywhere today so i like that the mo a more uh, modern version the 1970s version of this camera that is a rangefinder uses one of those um, 625 button type which kind of suggests that it doesn't need as much power as this one this one probably needs a little bit more power specifically i guess because of the um, flash cube yeah so that's the first camera the second one is a little bit more modern than that it is the um Practica BMS Electronic. Now, I'm very, very familiar with this type of SLR from Practica because I have shot the BX20 and the BCA extensively. I mean, like I used the BX20 for many years and I really loved it. It's made in Dresden. And um, actually this camera, I think came all the way from Slovakia because I think I bought it on eBay way back in the day. This wasn't actually part of the stash that I was talking about earlier on. And in those parts of the world, they were very, very popular. So you can find them in the millions uh, on eBay, actually, because back in those days, the Eastern Bloc countries basically didn't have access to some of the Western stuff. So a lot of them used practicas. Um, a friend of mine who's from Slovakia, who used to be a portrait and wedding photographer back in her twenties. Um, yeah, she was on the Practica system and she swears by it, it you know, did the job. I really like it. I find the designs of the Practicas to be very compact, very beautiful, actually very streamlined, actually better looking than a lot of the Western stuff. Um, I mean, look at this beauty. It looks kind of like a an Olympus, design, doesn't it? It looks very, really beautiful. And the lenses are very, very low profile, very compact. I have a few practical lenses, obviously that work with this one. This is the Practica B mount, not the, uh, you know, the old uh, M42 mount. 
So I'm looking forward to using that camera as well. The third and final camera is the mystery camera. I have no idea what this thing is. Some of you could probably read that right off there. Uh, it says there, it says triplet. So I suppose that's what it says in Cyrillic as well. Um, but I have no clue what this is. I've opened it up and inside. There's no clue that tells me what it is. So I'm going to do some forensic uh, investigation, some sleuthing on the internet to try and figure out. If you know what it is, then please let me know in the comment section. But it is a mystery camera at the moment. From what I can see, again, it's a simple uh, zone focusing point and shoot camera. Uh, it's got a cold shoe there, a standard film advanced film wind. It reminds me a bit of a Sminia 8. Uh, so it's probably quite similar to that. I won't be surprised if this is made by Lomo. And I can imagine Lomographers will love this kind of camera. Well, those are my three cameras that I pulled out of my stash. Other people go thrift shopping in charity shops. I go thrift shopping in my storage room. <laughs> anyway, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well. I wish you the best for you, friends and family. Um, keep safe and um, let's hope things get better in 2021. Addy Torrent, I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourself. Peace.